MLB The Show is your home for postseason baseball. It's game five of the American League Championship Series between the Minnesota Twins and the Tampa Bay Rays. Hi again, everyone. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special postseason coverage of baseball on the show. With me is Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak. And Danny, this is still anyone's series here as we get ready for game five. Well, they're down three games to one, so it's do or die time now. That's not a good place to be, obviously, but we do see some teams play their best when their backs are up against the ropes. The key is to just take it one game at a time and not worry about how many more wins you need. The postseason is officially in full swing. Lineups and first pitch coming up next. Yanni Chirinos gets the call in game five of the series. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, every team needs a pitcher like this one here. His numbers aren't going to blow you away. Career ERA just under four. But one thing he does, he takes the ball every five days, throws strikes, and gives his team a chance to win every single time he goes out there. He'll be fun to watch in this one here today. Hard ground ball to third. And he whiffs on it as this ball's right under his glove. Batting second. The third baseman, number 24, Josh Donaldson. Into the box now, Josh Donaldson. Polanco gets his lead at first, nobody out. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside, one and two now. And there are our umpires for this one. Working balls and strikes will be Mr. Daryl Parker. Well, Dero, Daryl Parker behind the dish, and you never really know what you're going to get from this guy. Yeah, sometimes, and I'd hate to be mean and say he flips a coin back there because that's not the case. But as an offensive player, you have to find a consistent zone. You just can't. Here now the 2-2. Grounded to third. This could be two. The second for one. On to first, and they turn the double play. Batting third, the designated hitter, Nelson Cruz. Two out, nobody on. Hit hard on the ground at first. And the inning will continue as that's through for a two-out hit. That is four. The left fielder, number 20, Eddie Rotorio. He's fallen behind now, three and one. No reason to sit on anything other than hard stuff in a location you like and drive it right now. The three and one pitch he is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. And a good fastball swung on and missed for strike three, and the inning is over. One left for Minnesota. Now it's the Rays' turn. No score. Randy Dobnik has the ball for the fifth game of the series. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, it's hard to have all four of your pitches on, but I think if this guy can have two or three of his four pitches and have command of them, he's going to have a really good game.
two balls and a strike to the Rays first baseman. Two and two. Beautifully thrown splitter right there. High 80s down in the zone. Looks like a fastball coming and then boom, the bottom falls out of it. Terrific pitch. And a slider runs in on him as he has to lean out of the way. Brandon Lau waits on deck. Line drive to center field. Buxton is right there, one down. Batting second, the second baseman, number eight. So striding in, Brandon Lau, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. The three and one pitch. And he missed with that one. It's ball four. A one-out walk here in the home first. You know, it takes a lot of discipline to watch a pitch like that go by. But on a 3-1 count, he had the luxury of being a little bit more selective up there. Good take and a walk is the result. one home hard liner to center field Buxton is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first and with two away here's a look at our updated playoff brackets and the question on everyone's mind is will we be able to punch our first ticket to the World Series after tonight's ball game? Set. Here comes the 1 1. Very high, 2 and 1. To 2 and 2 now. Two out with the man at first. Tried to bury one down and away, but it's a full count now. Three and two. Three, two, two out, runner on first. Lots of possible outcomes on this pitch. And the payoff pitch. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Kepler's there for it. And that's the third out. One left for Tampa. And this is still a nothing, nothing ball game. So coming to the plate, Luis Arias. He'll get us started in the top of the second. This is on the ground over to first. Reined in. And he'll take this to the bag himself. And the leadoff man set down to start the second. The first baseman, number 22, Miguel Sano. Into the box, Miguel Sano. No score here as we play inning number two. Now a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And it's two up, two down to start the second. Classic slider down and away for the strikeout there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. At the plate, Byron Buxton. Two and two. <laughs> yeah. 
Three balls and two strikes to the twin center fielder. Max Kepler would be next if they can keep this inning alive. Bases are empty here with two men out. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And that nearly broke our scoreless tie. Instead, it's a foul ball. The 3 2 one more time. Is at the knees and called strike three. Twins are set down one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. At the plate, Yoshi Tsutsugo. Swing and there it goes. He got all of this one and out of here. And I mean by plenty. That ball was crushed. A solo shot down the line in right. His third home run of this series as the Rays move out on top one to nothing. I know all home runs count the same, but that one went a little bit farther than most. That's what he does. A power hitter with a challenge fastball is going to go a long way when he's on his game. Bases are empty here, nobody out. Swung on, and this one's driven in the air as well to deep right field. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. Solo shot here to straightaway right field. His second home run of the series as the Rays move in front now, two to nothing. Another excellent swing right there. That's multiple home runs in the same inning. Watch yourself. You're missing over the heart of the plate. And now Kevin Kiermeyer. 2 and 1. Dobnek has a reputation as a strike thrower, although that doesn't often result in a ton of strikeouts. A typical start may find him with a low walk total and the ball in play a lot. Matty, he's what they call today one of those pitch to contact kind of guys. He has good stuff, not great stuff. He relies a lot on his defense. And one of the keys, he's not afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. With that said, he needs some defense behind it because he's not going to get a whole lot of swings and misses. Hit in the air down the left field line. And that'll get down for what should be extra bases. And he's going to get to second now with nobody out. No So striding forward now, Manuel Margot. No one out with a runner at second. A little bit outside, two and one. Way to third. Pitch outside the throw. Here's the tag from Donaldson. He's out at third base. Looked to me like he got a good jump off the pitcher from second, but it didn't matter that time. Always costly when you get caught stealing at third. And 
Strikes up to a 3-2 full count now. And he misses here for ball four. Already two walks surrendered in his first couple of innings of work. What's the saying? Uh, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Well, the guy on the bump obviously hasn't heard that one. So a runner at first with one man gone, and that'll bring up the catcher, Mike Zanino. There goes Margo. Pitch is high. The throw. Not going to get him as he swipes second. Hey, it's almost impossible to throw a base runner out that gets a lead that big. And plus, this catcher's not known for having a cannon of an arm. Ball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Count remains two and two. Got him swinging, chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. Digging in now, Yandy Diaz hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. Yeah, Matty, but as he walks to the plate right here, he feels good building off that last AB. He hit that ball on the screws. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. It's clear he just hasn't been able to find any rhythm out there. Pretty much unable to hit any of his spots, and now he's at three and one, and he's put him into another great hitting count. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. Timing just to tick off there as this one's fouled off to the right. Swing and a ball lifted in the air toward the line and right. Oh, he can't track it down as this ball falls. As he arrives at second without a play, as also on the play, a run comes across to score. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there. Safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. So now to the plate, Brandon Lau. Uh, right there is the second baseman, and that will retire the side. So two home runs in the inning lead to three runs on the scoreboard. We'll go now to the top of the third. It's the Rays three and the Twins nothing. Top of the third set to get underway. And digging in is the outfielder, Max Kepler. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs. But it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. The 3-2 pitch. And he lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin inning number three. Well, when you go with the slider there in a full count, you're go. hoping that the hitter is thinking fastball and swings through it. Didn't work out that way, though. He lays off and gets the free pass. Stepping into the box, Mitch Garver. He'll get to take his first cuts here. One one is in there for the second strike. Well, they've really had an answer for keeping him in check in this series. He's offered very little resistance with the bat in his hand so far. Nobody out, runner on first. Struck him out. the back number 11 back to the top of the order now Jorge. and that'll bring in Jorge Polanco to hit next the 1-1 one, one home waves and misses for strike number two runners on first with one down
This is hit the other way out toward left field. Heading after it is Margot, but he won't get there. It falls in. A lot of traffic hitting the base pass first and second with one out. I know you're looking for a double play ball, Don. No question about it. I think one of the things you like to do on a pitcher is try to jump on him early before he gets settled in. So far, so good. First and second. Looks like a big inning could be brewing. Into the box now. Josh Donaldson swung on and chopped up the middle. Step on the bag for one. Relay to first in time. And just like that, this side is retired. One hit, one left. We'll head now to the home half of inning number three. It's the Rays three and the Twins nothing. Coming to the plate now, Joey Wendell hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. Yeah, he hit it hard. That's all you can ask. You can't control the results sometimes, Matty. Just unlucky with the placement. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Boy, that's one of the toughest pitches to lay off. A hard breaking ball at the back foot. Tough take on a terrific pitch. Got a piece. It's two and two. I think getting the leadoff man in every inning is important as a pitcher. When you're coming off an inning that you really labored through, it makes all the difference mentally. Here now the 2-2. Pulled toward right center field. Kepler's there for it. One out. Now about it. No way feeling. So one away oh, here with man. the bases empty. Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. The two one home is taken for strike two. Bases are empty, one man out. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. Talk about blowing it by a guy. Jeez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him oh, when the swing the came through the zone. I have to think he was hitter. looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. Stepping in now, Yoshi Tsutsugo. One and two now as that one's fouled off. And now pitch on the way. Hit down the line at first. But this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. The pitch. Now a fastball as he just reared up and let that one fly and the inning is over. Rays go in order one two three but well, they lead it three nothing and that'll bring up the big stick of Nelson Cruz as we begin the top of the fourth Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. This guy's been throwing the ball great so far, but he's going to be tested here. Four, five, and six coming up this part of the lineup. To two balls and two strikes now. Still two and two. Full count, three balls and two strikes to the Twins DH. Hey, throwing the ball great up until this point. Don't want to allow a leadoff walk. Needs to just focus in on his mechanics right here. High in the air down the right field line. Right fielder giving chase, but this will land untouched. And he lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin stands at number four. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. So here's the cleanup hitter, Eddie Rosario. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. 
the one two Yanked on the ground down the line, but a foul ball as it holds it two and two. A runner at first with no outs here. Lays off the splitter that time, and it's full three and two. These last two guys are making him work quite a bit out there. Both have been long at bats, and all in all, he's had to make 13 throws just to them so far. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Margo's under it. He's got it one away. In now, Luis Arias. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result. That's his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything up. Now, here's a fly ball. Well hit. Meadows moving back. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Here's Miguel Sano looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the guy on the mound. He's getting paid to try and get you out as well. Anytime it gets up there north of seven, eight pitch ABs, sometimes it just comes down to pure execution. Let's see if he makes the adjustment right here. No runs, three hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. High in the air down the right field line. But this will wind up being a foul ball. The 2-2. Rounded down the third baseline. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at 2-2. Two and two. And again, he's unable to keep it fair, but he's putting together quite a battle at the plate. Working for the punch out and the offering. Right at the third baseman and that'll end the inning. Twins wind up stranding one. They trail it here three to nothing. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth. But before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've been able to push across three runs to this point, but they've also made the opposition work extremely hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and they think they're going to have a good opportunity to push across a lot more runs as he tires or as they get into that bullpen. Thank you, Heidi. Stepping up now, Willie Adamas. He went deep in his first at-bat. We'll see what he's got in store for us here. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. And this is low, ball two. Two and one. We got two balls, one strike. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Buxton is there and he has it for the first down. Now back, Peter Fielder. One out here now in the back. Tampa Bay fourth. And Kiermaier. that means Kevin Kiermeyer will hit next. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. Kepler's going back. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. So bases are empty here with two gone. And that'll bring up the versatile center fielder, Manuel Margo. The bouncer to the left side. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. 
And this is a case of a hitter's reputation preceding it. The ball was a little dribbler to the left side, but he knew the guy had speed, so he rushed it and ends up unable to make a clean play. That's another example of why speed is such an offensive weapon. Inside and a hair low. It's two balls and two strikes. Yeah, and that splitter is normally the go-to pitch to this guy, but it really hasn't shown that good downward action that he usually has. He needs to get back to finishing it out front. Looking to punch him out again, the pitch. Lined hard toward right center, and that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Number Just an unbelievable piece two. of hitting right there. Yandy. Staying on the inner half of that baseball yeah. right there. Staying to it and through it. Not coming around it and able to drive it the other way for a base hit. Standing in now, Yandy Diaz. Chopped on the ground over to first. Right to him. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Rays strand a pair. They lead it three to nothing. We're back at Tropicana Field, and let's check in with Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. He said it seems like every at-bat has gone deep into the count, which has resulted in a really high pitch count for their opponent. We checked the numbers. So far, they've worked a total of six full counts. Guys? Thank you, Heidi. Swing and a miss on the sinker, and it's one and two. A couple of lefties start to get loose now in the bullpen. Trying to send him packing for the second time. A bouncer up the middle. And this is going to get on through into center, a leadoff hit. Now back, right fielder, Matt Kepler. To the plate now, Max Kepler just does manage to get a piece there as this is bounced foul. Throw over to the bag, and he'll get back in standing. The one two. No runs, four hits, and one error make up the totals for the Twins to this point. Uh, got him swinging on the split-fingered pitch, and that's out number one. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. At the plate, Mitch Garver. Can't keep that one fair, and now the count's full. And another foul ball. Now a move over to first. Don't want to forget about it. Payoff pitch one more time. And he got him. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts now as they've been unable to advance that leadoff single into scoring position. Yeah, clearly no problems working out of the stretch right now, Matt. He's taking control of this inning after giving up that hit. Now we'll see if he can finish it off strong as well. Two 
So now to the plate, Jorge Polanco. There goes Buxton. Strike called. Now the throw down is well behind the play. That's an easy stolen base. Some managers treat the postseason as a time to be aggressive, and that's exactly the case here. They had the speed burner on the move, and it worked out nicely for him. Just got to drive him in now. Lifted the other way down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. The one two. Outside and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there. Really battles. Doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder. Always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher. Hit on the ground to third. Field it cleanly. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. One left for Minnesota. They trail in this one, three nothing. Up next for the Rays, Brandon Lau. He lined out in his last trip, so looking for better fortunes here. Yeah, pretty unlucky right there, Maddie squared up a fastball nicely and that's all you can do you just want to be on time for the heater and he's prepared for this next AB. and the sliders in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball the classic back foot slider right there with two strikes usually gets a ton of swing and misses nice layoff right there fight for another pitch And he lays off a pitch off the plate and high, three and two. Not a time to fool around right now on a three-two count with the middle part of the order coming up. Expect a good pitch to swing at. Now the payoff pitch home. It's the top of the zone. He struck him out looking. Just flat out froze him there. Nothing too deceptive about that four-seam fastball. So I think he wasn't expecting it at all. In now, Joey Wendell. One and two now. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. Got to take advantage of that pitch right there. 0-2 breaker hanging over the heart of the plate. Not going to see too many of those today. Fouled off. Lifted the other way out to left center. Chasing after it is Rosario. And that gets down and ought to be good for extra bases. And he's in there easily at second with a one-out double. That was not a good pitch, but he handled it nicely, guys. Yeah, and the pitcher's got to wonder what he has to do to get it past this guy. That pitch was off the plate, but he shows great reach, gets good extension, and drives it for a two-bagger. Here's the Minnesota skipper making his way out to the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. So he'll make his way to the dugout after working just four and a third. And he just didn't have his best stuff in this one. Fernando Romero, a right-hander standing six foot even, will take over the pitching duties here. Fernando Romero. Austin Meadows will be his first assignment out of the bullpen as he'll stand in with a runner in scoring position at second and one away. One out and a runner on second base. Lays off the slider that time. Two and one.
Boy, he just threw that fastball by him. He's set. Here's the 2 2. Ripped on the ground to first. He's got it. And he'll take this one to the bag for the out. But meanwhile, the runner will move up 90 feet to third base. Now got it. Digging in, Yoshi Tsutsugo. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the club. Men on third with two down. And that's low ball four. The batter, number one. Good stop. Striding in, Willie Adamas. And we'll see what he can do here with a pair of runners on base and two gone here in the fifth. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Rays strand a pair, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Josh Donaldson digging in now. He was a double play victim last time around. Yeah, rolling into a two ball will eat at you for the rest of the game at least. So you know he wants to make up for it right here. Hit hard to the right side. Foul. Another 2-2 offering. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. What a great battle to start this inning. What a great job by the leadoff hitter. He knows that this pitcher's starting to get up there and pitches. The manager's starting to get restless. Let's see if we can knock him out and get him to that bullpen. Tough pitch to lay off, but he did, and it's ball four, so the leadoff hitter's aboard to start the sixth. Digging in to try it again. Nelson Cruz. It was a walk in his last trip. And here's a slider for a called strike, and he's behind one and two now. All you want is the leadoff man to get on to start a big inning, maybe get a big rally going to claw your way back into this ball game. The one-two. A line shot to third base. And it got there so quickly, the runner didn't get very far from the bag. They the settled with just the one out. Eddie Rafael. The number four Minnesota hitter, Eddie Rosario. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Fouled away. Making him sweat out there. The seventh pitch coming up. Neither guy willing to give in, and the at bat will continue. Payoff pitch one more time. High in the air and drifting out to shallow center. In comes Margo. He can't get there as it falls in. He'll get it into second. And there's out number two. Oh, man. I don't know how that happened. It looked to be a base hit to the outfield, but then all of a sudden the throw comes in and they get the force on the plate. To be honest, that just can't happen. Now the Rays manager is going to take that slow walk out toward the mound. And we're going to see a pitching change as that's going to do it for his starter here tonight. So he'll head for the showers as he stands to win this one if the bullpen can find a way to protect his three-run lead. You're Brendan McKay three. takes over here with the now runner at first the and two gone in the inning. Number 49, Brendan McKay. Luis Arias will be the first to greet him here as he stands in with a runner at first and two away. A runner on first with two away. This is hit softly to third. Throw to second for the force out and the side is retired. 
Twins wind up stranding one. Still down three nothing. Ready for another chance. Kevin Kiermeyer. He's one for two in this one. The one one. Now the Twins are going to get a lefty up and throwing in the bullpen. And a slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. And that one misses, so the leadoff man will head down to first on ball four to start the bottom of the sixth. He's really struggled with his command in this game, no doubt about it. But to make things worse, he just lost one of the fastest guys in the ballpark. And that'll bring up Manuel Margot. And error allowed him to reach base in his last appearance. Nobody out, runner on first. Runs up and gets this one down. And an off-balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. He tried the surprise attack there with the bunt with a runner on base. Hey, he gets thrown out, but it works just as good as a sacrifice. Here now is Mike Zanino. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. The one two popped him up and he'll stay with it to put it away as they get their man here for the second out. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Yandy Diaz. He was a ground out victim last time up. The one one home. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. A swinging bunt out in front of the plate. Throw in time and the side is retired. Ray's strand just the one. But they lead it 3 nothing. New inning set to get underway. And here comes the first baseman, Miguel Sano. Starting to run out of time. They haven't been able to score any runs as we're moving late into this one. A perfect time for this leadoff guy to try to get on base and ignite a rally. Hot shot to third and handled for the first out. Now batting the center fielder. One gone now in the Minnesota seventh. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder Byron Buxton. Buxton ahead in the count. Three balls and a strike. Max Kepler will be next. One out. Nobody on. Sent in the air out to straightaway central. Kiermaier's got a read on it. Two gone. Max Kepler the next to grab a bat. He went down on strikes last time up. Two out, nobody on. A little too tall that time. Three and one now. And action now in the Tampa Bay pen as it looks like a right-hander's begun to get loose. The 3-1. This offense has been underachieving all day, putting way too much pressure on their own pitching staff. Someone has to have a quality A-B and get this line going. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. High 
pop up. Adamas settles under it near second, and that retires the side. Down go the Twins in order. They trail it here, three to nothing. Now at the plate, Brandon Lau. He got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, in today's game, certainly don't get completely reprimanded for too many strikeouts, but no one likes to go down looking. Now he spins on one here and drives it to deep right field. And it's gone as they add still another. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. His second home run of the series. And the Rays have opened it up even further now. It's four to nothing. Well, that was this lineup's third homer of the game. You know, D-Row, looks like the boys are dialing long distance from the batter's box so far. <laughs> yeah, the pitchers aren't fooling anyone today, Dan. Let's see if this trend continues. Into the box, Joey Wendell. Trying to nibble here, and he misses to run it full now. Three and two. Grounded to short. Throw on to first, so a good comeback there as he gets the first out of the inning. One out now in the Tampa Bay seventh, and Austin Meadows will be the next to bat. Bases are empty, one man out. And he goes against the shift there as this is on the ground at the left side. And that gets through for a one out base hit. And he's able to hustle his way up to second as he'll reach here with a two base hit. As we look again at that double here, you can see that he was thinking too right out of the box. Smashed it down the line, and that was some great hustle to beat the throw to second to earn himself a double. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. So with a left-handed hitter waiting, they'll go to their own left-hander out of the bullpen. Number 72. Yoshi Tsutsugo will stand in here hoping to duplicate what he did back in the second inning as we flash you back to take another look at his solo home run that helped get this offense rolling. full here's the pitch and he misses ball four so he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces yeah that strategy is great when it works but when it doesn't it's ugly and he was here to face one guy and he couldn't get it done standing in Willie Adamas he's working on a one for three thus far the one two <laughs> it back up the middle one there on to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning Rays tack on one more thanks to the solo home run seven complete here tonight it's now four nothing Tampa Bay Colin Poche has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth Ready to begin the eighth, and now it'll be the catcher, Mitch Garver. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. The count now at two and one. High in the air out to center field. Kiermaier is right there, one down. The and now the 
now back to the leadoff spot okay. in the Twins lineup. Stepping in, Jorge Polanco. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. The one two. Hey, it's much easier to lay up the breaking stuff when it's coming in towards you instead of when it breaks away. A good take there. And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up. This is on the ground over to first. And that is through into right field for a single. Hey, <laughs> Dero, not a bad night. Three singles, but hey, but he'll take three for four every day of the week. Yeah, in today's day and age, Dan, where everything's a homer, a walk, or a strikeout, it's refreshing to see this guy throw out three base hits. Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. 0 for 2 with a walk for him so far. Runner at first here, one man out. Helping him out here as he swings and misses to fall behind a ball in two strikes. The one two. Popped him up. Adamas is calling for it. And that's the second out of the inning. Right now is the designated hitter. Nelson Cruz hit the ball pretty well in his last at bat, but it resulted in a line out. Yeah, Maddie, it's always a little frustrating when you square one up. You hit a solid line drive like you did, and all you have to show for it is a jog back to the dugout. That can get in your head for a little while. Three and one to him now. Two out with the man at first. Squared that one up just a little late. Line drive base hit. Oh, and he botches it. Polanco ignores his coach. He's chugging for home. Safe at the plate as they now trail by only three. Boy, talking about coming up with a big knock after that pop up and looked like the inning was potentially over. Big two out base hit to drive in a run. Yeah, you watch your teammate in front of you miss his pitch. He got a nice pitch to hit right there and pops it up. You could tell he was dejected as he went back to the dugout. All you're trying to do is be a great teammate. Sean Casey always used to say to me, hey, d -Row, mix in a good teammate one time. That's exactly what this guy did. Nick Anderson is called upon with two out in the eighth as he's asked to complete a four out save. Blake now, Eddie Rosario. Ball three as the sinker misses just off the black that time. Well, tying run on deck. He should get something really good to hit right here in a 3-1 count. I'd be sitting on a fastball middle in. High and deep down the left field line. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. hit hard on the ground is short. Oh, and he can't come up with it. Throw on the first gets him, and the side is retired. So a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Home half of the eighth straight ahead. The Rays are in front, 4-1. to one. Matt Wisler is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth.
So here's Kevin Kiermeyer. Past battles with Matt Whistler. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. Slider just about gets away from him there as it runs in a bit too close for comfort. With this one almost in the books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, D. Rob. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. He threw first and hustling for second. And that is off the wall in right field. And the Rays strike quickly here in the inning. It's a leadoff double. Now back. Sometimes when a reliever comes in a game, he wants to get that first strike so bad that he serves one up, and that's exactly what happens here. The first batter he faces just rockets one off the wall, and now he's got to worry about another base hit, potentially bringing home a run. Now to the plate, Manuel Margot. He laid down a sacrifice bunt in his last trip. And not easy to do in today's game. High velocity, exploding breaking stuff. He executed that sack bump perfectly. Eighth inning, four to one is our score. On the ground, back up the box, and it'll get through into center field. A base hit. Now a long throw home. But this is well up the line, and he's safe at home plate. Hey, that's what you try and do as an offense. You get a four-round lead, they're grand slam ahead, Dan. But you're a former closer, warm enough. When you see a three-run lead, and then your offense gets it to four, you know that same situation's gone out the window. Don't tell me that didn't work. Oh, it does hurt. Oh, oh, it does because, Dero, the only way you're going to get into this game is it has to be a safe situation. You sit and watch eight innings of baseball, you get up to warm up in the ninth, and you're all ready to go thinking, hey, I'm going to come in and get me a three-out save, and all of a sudden you're out of the game because it's a four-run lead. Of course you think about it as a reliever. Got him to miss the breaking ball there. Mike Zanino becomes the first out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Standing in now, Yandy Diaz. Hit out towards second. And that finds its way through for a base hit. He had him on the ropes right there. Count leverage, two strikes against the batter. He's going to have to put that in the memory bank because that guy made a nice two-strike approach right there. Made a nice two-strike adjustment. At the plate, Brandon Lau. A ball and two strikes. First and second now, one man out. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. From the belt, the pitch. Grounded up the first baseline. But a foul ball as it holds it two and two. Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing on that pitch, and he just didn't get the back to the zone in time. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. Into the box now, Joey Wendell. And this one runs a little too far in, ball two. His pitch count is getting up there in the inning now. He needs to get this frame over with sooner than later, so forcing contact and getting the defense involved is probably the best thing he can do. There's a swing and a high, deep drive headed for the right field corner. And that's going to wind up hooking just a bit foul, so a missed opportunity there. And that's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. He's set. Here's the three and two. High and deep down the left field line. And that will end up a foul ball. The three, two, one more time. And a fastball misses there, ball four. Oh, that's a walk that could really change the complexion of the game. With the bases loaded, if he gives up a base hit right here, it could get real ugly. 
Tyler Duffy answers the call to pitch here in a big spot. He inherits a bases loaded jam, but needs just one out to get out of it. Austin Meadows will be the first one to greet him, and he'll bat in a big spot here. Bases loaded and two out in the inning. One and one count. Here's the pitch. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. Set and the two and one pitch. Well, the shortstop's got him played perfectly as he takes this in for the third out. Rays will settle for just the one. We're on to the ninth now in game number five. It's the Rays five and the Twins one. All set to start the ninth in this one. And set to go is the second baseman, Luis Arias. Rarely do you see a closer come in when you have a comfortable lead like this one here. We'll see if he's able to keep his concentration. A lot of times, closers have a difficult time when they have that lead of three or more runs. You got to be paying attention as an offense in a hitters meeting in this situation. When you got a guy on the mound that you know the bottom can drop out of any pitch he throws, you have to elevate your sights. And oh, he can't get out of the way of that one, so the leadoff man will be on to open the frame. Well, they say beggars can't be choosers, and when you're losing, you can't always choose how you get on base, but you've got to get on any way that you can, so he'll take that even though it probably hurts a little bit. Up next for Minnesota, Miguel Sano. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. A runner at first with no outs here. A two ball, one strike count to the Twins' first baseman. one sinker and it's three balls in a strike now he drilled the previous batter and now he falls behind three one to this guy the last thing you can do though is throw a fastball middle of the plate right here and the count will be full full count here here comes the pitch Count remains full. Another full count pitch home. Too high, and that cost him ball four. So that will bring in Byron Buxton. And these guys are making a little push here. You have to like the effort despite the odds. Yeah, you really do, Matt. Look, they still have a significant hill to climb. But hey, they string a couple of hits together here. And all of a sudden, this thing feels doable. One and one, here it comes. None out, runners at first and second. Just hung in there on that one. If you're on the mound right there and you're getting a swing at a breaking ball off the plate, do not be shocked if he's tucked something up under this guy's chin hot right here. In the dirt, and now let's see. Goes to third with it, and he's going to make it up to third here as he advances on the wild pitch. 
Well, you live by the sword, you die by it, too. He went with an off-speed pitch down in the zone, and that's the risk you take there. The catcher can't come up with it, and two runners advance. Now they're both in the scoring position. A couple of men in scoring position here with none down. This is on the ground over to first. Throw just does get him at first as he was really moving that time. Now in the box, Max Kepler. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Runners are at second and third with one down. Swing and a drive to right. There it goes. And it's gone. So it's a three-run shot to straightaway right field. As they pull within one here, it's now a 5-4 game. in now Mitch Garver hit the target but this is low two and one hey this isn't going to be an easy save these guys are making it work for this one three runs already home here hit in the air down the right field line but no chance to run it down it's a foul ball And it's fouled away. And he fouls this one off. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. Well, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese, swung at a miss. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. Into the box, Jorge Polanco. Now a ball lined to the left side, but foul. Final strike for the Twins. Count still at one and two. And it's getting loud now here in the Dome. A sold out crowd. 36,973 fans on their feet. Counts even two and two for Polanco. Coming up now on 30 pitches in the inning. Never tempted to swing at that ball down low. It's ball three. Time to narrow your focus up there at the plate. In a one-run game, he doesn't want to walk you, so there's a good chance he's going to get something to handle right here. Has him down to their final strike. Here it comes. Boy, really making him work now as the seventh pitch of the at-bat is also fouled away, so the count will hold steady at three balls and two strikes. He'll try it again, three and two. Again, he sends it out of play. Ah, and he strikes him out to end it here as they were able to get the possible time run to the plate but could not cash in. Hey, we were really treated to a good one today. Bottom of the eighth proved to be the difference, though, and a good job here in the ninth to close the book on this one. Tight ball game all throughout. 
Winds up a slim one-run victory in the end as we get you one final look at our line score. And there's no better time of year to come up big for your team than in the postseason. And that's exactly what this man did. He's our tops player of the game. And obviously, every game is so important in the postseason. So when you come to play like he did and make a big difference for your team, it's something that won't be forgotten. This evening's game comes to an end 5-4 the final tally. The Tampa Bay Rays now trail three games to two in this league championship series. Yanni Chirinos pitches well enough to get the W. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vasquez, and you've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Rays. Five runs on 11 hits. No errors. They left 12 men on base. For the Twins, four runs, seven hits, one error. They left seven men on base.